today at Klein's Garage, we're going to be blueprinting this crankshaft. This is a GSR crank. It has an 87 millimeter stroke. The 87 millimeter comes into measuring from the center line of the crankshaft up to the center line of the rod journal is half of your stroke. So basically, when the crank rotates, your, your position's here, and then it rotates around. So the measurement from here over to here is 87 millimeters. That's the exact measurement that your rod and piston are going to go up into your cylinder. So that's how you that's how you measure stroke. You would take the center line of the crank, main journals, and measure it to the center line of your rod journal, and double it. So that that would be a, a way to measure stroke on a crankshaft. But tonight we're going to be going over how to blueprint this crank. Uh, you're gonna need some some specialized tools in order to do this. The tool of choice is a micrometer. This is a micrometer. This is made by Brown and Sharp, made in the USA. Uh, you want to buy quality micrometers. There are horrible freight micrometers they sell. The problem is with the horrible freight micrometers is they're rough when you use them. Your calibration blocks are might not be accurate. I'm not going to say they're not because there may be ones out there that are, but I personally know someone who had a calibration block that was like a thousandth and a half or almost two thousandths out of spec, which is very dangerous because before you use a micrometer, you really should take your calibration block and test and check the calibration on your micrometer. This mic I do not very use very often. I bought it a bunch of years ago, probably maybe nine years ago. Uh, it was sent out and professionally calibrated, but I check it every time I use it, which is not very often, maybe once a year or something. Uh, so take your calibration block, which should come with most mics. If it doesn't, you're going to need to purchase one or borrow one from someone you know if they, you know they have one. Just make sure it's not a horrible freight. Anyway, so take your block, put it in, rotate the anvil down until it's snug. Now you notice this still continues to spin. The top doesn't. This is what you always want to use when you're taking measurements. The reason why you want to do that is because this applies a certain amount of pressure on your calibration block or on your main or your piston, whatever, whatever whatever piece of material that you're measuring. If you use the top, it can load the caliper. First off, it's really bad for it. And second off, it's going to throw your measurement off. So it's pointless to even do it. So always use, uh, always use your ratchet here. So basically, wiggle your ratchet. Make sure, obviously, your faces are clean. This is a carbide face. The end of it is uh, has carbide. Uh, stuck to it. So make sure there's no major buildup on here. Rotate it down to position. All right, now we got it down, fairly snug. Close your lock. Now you know it ain't going to move around on you. So you'll see right here we have the fixed line and then the line that's on on our adjuster the zero one all the way around a mic till 24 those are one thousandth of an inch increments once you have it set you can turn it and you'll see zero all the way up to nine and I think there's zero on the end for some reason but whatever line lines up next to the number three doesn't line up with a mark so we know it's not three right now zero lines up with a mark so we know since this is our, our ten thousandths of an inch increment it's at zero tenths so this micrometer is right on to one ten thousandth of an inch which is 
actually pretty amazing because a piece of paper is between three and four thousandths. That's 30 to 40 times larger unit of measure than you we're, we're going to measure in here with. So we got our calibration set. Take our calibration block off. Put it back where it belongs so we don't lose it. They're not cheap. So what you want to do is you want to bring your mic out. What a lot of guys will do is rub it on their hand. It's a quick way to open it up. Bring it into your journal. Always use your ratchet. So I'm going to put a little bit of, you know, keep going with it there and wiggle it around. And you'll feel, you'll feel where, where the highest spot is. And that's where you want to go. Stay kind of right in the middle. Lock her down. So we're going to pull it out. Do it one more time. We got a good feel there. All right. So we have our measurement. Close your lock. Now it won't move around on you. So you have zero, one. These these numbers here are one tenth. So it'll be point one. Then there's a small line after the one. That's twenty five. So it'll be point one two five. Then there's a large line, so it'll be point one five. And then you take that and you add whatever number you're at here on the end. So it would be 0 0.15 plus 14, so it would be 0 0.164, so 0 0.164 thousandths. So let's check our tenth side. So we're going to look around here, which line lines up. The number 4 lines up pretty darn close, the 5 is a little bit farther away than a 4, so we got 0.1. Six, four, four. So it'll be point one six four four. Point one five plus the one four. So point one six four plus four tenths. So that's our measurement. This is a two to three mic. So with with a two to three mic, you got two inches to start so it's two inches 164 thousandth with four tenths so 2.1644 that's our, our measurement what you want to do is you want to write that down make up a sheet I have a sheet I don't know if I can share it possibly share it somehow on YouTube I don't know but maybe we'll, I'll look into that uh, but write each write each of them down that's blueprinting a motor. You pay a lot of money to get a motor blueprint. So what I do, check it, write it down, then go 180 out, or I'm sorry, 90 degrees out, and measure it again. And check it. On your mains, it should be really darn close. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be hardly out at all of round, but it's always good to check. So, close our lock. We got 0.15 plus 1.4 plus 14. So it'll be 0 0.164. See what lines up? The four lines up. The four line lines up with the other line. So, 0.1644. That's 90 degrees out. So we know that that main journal is on accurately to one ten thousandth of an inch which is impressive now on a rod journal a rod journal is smaller so 
uh, our, we're, we can't use a two to three mic because it's under two inches. So we're gonna use a different micrometer. The, the two to three inch micrometer that I have, it is, uh, I have a standard and also a metric. The metric is, uh, it's not called a two to three, it's called a 50 to uh, seven, I'm sorry, a, yeah, 50 to 75 millimeter. I just picked this up off of YouTube, off, uh, sorry, Amazon, the other day. So, what you want to do is check this to, in the same manner that you check the other one with a calibration block. Now, if you don't have a calibration block for a metric one, which I don't, I use a standard one. And then you just do the math to, to convert from metric to standard and you know it's there's no difference it, you just you just gotta do the math and it'll, it'll get you right on so basically bring bring the mic all the way out same deal always use these grips let's put it in position here That feels pretty good to me. We'll lock it and we'll see what it says. Now, this is a totally different unit of measure. So, the micrometer set up completely different. When I first looked at this, I was like, what the heck? Because I'm used to using a standard mic. Uh, it, it's really actually considerably easier to use. So, you got 25 millimeter, 30, 40, right? So, we're we're at 40 millimeters, so it'd be 41, 42, 43, 44, 44 and a half. The bottom blocks are half plus whatever our measurement is here. So it's zero around to 45, 49, this would be 50. So you have half marks on the bottom. So it's similar to way, <coughs> the way we added uh, 25 thousandth on our, on our increments. All you're doing is you're adding the, a half to this. So we got 40, one, two, three, four and a half plus 45, 46, 47, 48, a little under 49 plus uh, 50 from here so it'd be 41 two three four <coughs> excuse me it'd be 44 nine nine I'm sorry 44 nine eight be 44.98 millimeters now, if you look at the side, we'll see what lines up. To me, it looks like the number four, number four, lines up the closest. I don't know, six is even closer. So, our measurement is 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 50, point, you know, point 0.5 plus 0.45, six, seven, eight. So 44.986. So 44.986 millimeters was our measurement of the rod journal. Now with rod journals, you wanna make sure you measure in multiple locations around because the, the uh, journal that's gonna take the most wear in a motor on a crank is always your rod because your rod journal because the the rod journal is what's moving the uh, rod and piston up and down the cylinder you got a weight slamming on on it and uh, it's it's the most the most dynamic movement on your crank
So you want to make sure you're checking multiple locations around and make sure that the crank is is round. Uh, if it's not round, if it's out, what you want to do is you want to take it to a machine shop and have a, a machine shop uh, micro polish it and, and grind it if uh, if absolutely necessary. But mine is in a really good condition still, which is surprising because um, <laughs> I beat the crap out of this motor. But anyway, we're good. So that's the way that you would measure all of your journals. And along with your main journals, you want to write down your rod journal size on your uh, on your sheet. So make up a sheet. I'll try to share one if I can with one, two, three, four, five means, one, two, three, four rod journals. Write all the sizes down. And then what the reason why you want to write all those numbers down is because you want to take your rod and you want to bolt your your rod cap on and measure the ID. We got our OD, right? I want to measure our ID of the rod. And when you measure the ID of the rod and the OD of the crank, you can do the math and figure out how much distance you have, how much clearance you have. So you can take your bearing, measure your bearing thickness, subtract it from the difference, and that will mathematically tell you what your bearing clearance is right off the bat before you even assemble anything you know with with pretty darn good accuracy what your what your bearing clearance is and then obviously after you assemble it and we're going to go through an assembly video <coughs> probably next week or so putting the engine together with our plastic gauge to to uh to double check using physical means that not not just mathematics to, to double check and see what our measurements are so blueprinting of a crank as always, have fun, stay safe everyone.